Today, I join Barbadians, West Indians, and the rest of the cricketing world in saying farewell to a legend of the game, Sir Everton de Courcy Weeks, just four and a half years shy of what would have been his final century in his life. The man whose distinction of scoring five successive centuries is unequaled by any other human being. So Everton was the last remaining member of the world famous three W's. And he now joins his partners, Sir Frank Worrell, who departed us in 1967, and Sir Clyde Walcott, who played his final innings in 2006. They're all in history's pantheons of true gentlemen who indeed made cricket the sport of gentlemen. Sir Everton is sure to live on in the memory as one to emulate in our country. Born into genuinely humble circumstances in Pickwick Gap on the outskirts of Bridgetown in 1925, a stone's throw away from Kensington Oval, he never allowed his beginning to define his life or his success. He left school at the age of 14 with no academic qualifications to boast about. And with no job, most of his time was spent playing football and cricket. Already, his cricketing skills were starting to show, particularly as a teenage member of Westshire Cricket Club in the Barbados Cricket League. His early interaction with the world-renowned Oval and the all-white Pickwick Club that was based there was assisting the groundsmen in preparing the field. But by the closing of his career representing Barbados in the West Indies as a batsman extraordinaire, he had distinguished himself not only at Kensington, but on all of the game's most recognized pitches around the world. So Everton represented Barbados from 1944 until 1964, the West Indies from 1948 until 1958, and recorded the distinguished career of league cricket in England. His name will forever be associated with the scoring of boundaries along the ground, ensuring that the scoring of those runs did not expose him to get it out sheer brilliance and genius for a young Barbadian. Indeed, it is for his most significant contribution to the cricket game that he was awarded this country's highest honor, the Knight of the Order of St. Michael and St. George in 1995. How's that for the boy from the outskirts of the Orleans, who when he came into this world, his parents did not have two cents to rub together, according to him. For me, Sir Everton was one of the most brilliant men with a turn of phrase and a sense of humor, second to none. His life story represents the best of the Bajan journey, committed and confident, stylish and classy, dignified and urbane to the very end, well-read and creative, a global citizen with Bajan roots. On behalf of the government and people of Barbados, I salute Sir Everton as a true representation of the Barbadian can-do spirit as a perfect example of perseverance over adversity, the embodiment of what our country requires today to beat back the bounces of COVID-19 or of climate change and the economic inequality we face day after day from rich and powerful nations. To his family and the family of Empire Cricket Club, that more than a century old oasis on Bank Hall where his heart was sustained for decades, I express our deepest condolences. Long may Sir Everton's memory inspire thousands and thousands of Barbadians that they can be whoever they want to be and to do it with style and to be committed to excellence. May he rest in peace.